Okay, so after learning about the goods uh, market, okay, what we'll be doing is that we'll be combining the goods market, uh, which compi which comprises of investment, okay, and savings. We'll combine all of that into a graph called the IS model. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today, and we need this because we need to find out the equilibrium okay, between uh, the goods market as well as another market called the liquid assets market, basically the market for money. Okay, so what is the IS model? The IS model is equilibrium in the goods market determined by interest rates and income. Okay, so this is what my uh, IS curve would look like. Okay, I have got interest on the y-axis, I've got income on the y-axis, okay, and I got a downward so sloping uh, graph curve, okay, and I'm going to label that IS, okay, and inside this bracket are uh, actually the components that affects the IS, which is uh, mainly uh, government spending and taxes. There can be more, okay, but uh, we'll go through that shortly. Alright, now, how did... I derive the IS curve. So graphically, okay, I'll show you how graphically. Okay, what happens is that on top of here I have my AE model. Okay, I have the 45 degree line and I have my aggregate expenditure curve. And at this point, this is the equilibrium point, we call that point A. Okay, we are at why not? Okay, and we are gonna expand this downwards to another graph. Okay, and we'll we'll put are on the y-axis and the x-axis must be y because we are combining it, combining it this way. Okay, so at this particular amount of interest rates, there was this particular amount of investments. Okay, and this particular amount of interest rates, which caused this particular amount of investment, caused this AE curve. Okay, so this led to investment, investment led to this. Okay, and that's why we are at why not. So now, in order to get the uh, IS curve, okay, just like how we derived the demand curve for goods back in chapter 2, we're going to do that for the IS curve. So what we're going to do is, we're going to decrease interest rates to R1. Okay, so I'm just going to decrease it here, R1. Okay, and I'm just going to draw lines over here, like that, horizontal line. So what happens after this? Investment increases, right? When there is lower interest rates, investment increases. Why? Because it's not attractive to put my money in the bank anymore. I should just go put it in some investments. That's why investment increases. So, when investment increases, the AE curve shifts up. Like this. AE. And I have a new equilibrium point, point B. And I'm going to bring this down. I am at Y1. I'm not done yet. I'm going to bring it down all the way to the second graph below. And that's Y1. And realize that we actually intersect at this point over here that's called point B. So I've got a point A here, I've got a point B here. I just draw a downward sloping line connecting these two things together. And I have my IS curve, which is affected by government spending and taxes. Okay, so see, it's easy to come up with this. But the difficult thing is, um, how do I determine whether this IS curve is going to shift? Or is it going to be steeper, flatter? I do not know. Okay. So, uh, th I mean, there are many ways to, to do it, like you can use common sense, but common sense has to be justified as well, right? So, let me show you a mathematical derivation of the IS curve, and you will soon see that why it is so simple, okay, on how to determine when the curve will move. Now, let me give you this mathematical derivation of it. This is important because we can see where the slope of the IS curve is going to be, steeper, flatter, and we will know whether it's going to shift. Okay, now assuming that we have an economy with lump sum taxes, okay, and this is my AE equation, okay, I have got, uh, I should use a pencil to point for you, man. Okay, at equilibrium, AE equals Y equals to C0 plus C1 bracket Y minus T bracket plus I0 minus I1 R0 plus G0. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to isolate our interest on the left side. Okay, we're going to isolate that on the left side. Okay, and what we're going to get is throwing everything, or this whole thing to this side, and throwing Y over to the right side, I've got this. Okay, the only difference is that Y is here, and this has jumped over to this side. And what I'm going to do next is, okay, I'm going to move all the Y components to the right side. 
Okay, everything's going to the right side. And then I'm gonna factorize uh, y outside. So I'm gonna take y outside. So I have c1 minus 1. So I'm gonna let this whole thing over here, this whole thing, be a, a bar because that is autonomous, right? It's not in fact it's not affected by interest rates nor income. So to make things easier, I'll put it a, I'll call it a bar. So I've got i1 r0 equals to a bar minus y bracket 1 minus c1. Now you realize that I've actually uh, factorized negative 1 outside, so this becomes a negative y, and I have 1 minus c1. The reason why I did this is because the IS curve is downward sloping. Okay, so that's why I got this. And I'm going to bring this, this side, so it's going to be a bar divided by i1 minus this divided by i1. Now, don't you think this looks like your y equals to mx plus c function? Now, this is your y-axis, right? Your r0. This is your y-intercept. This is your supposedly x, you know, y equals to mx plus, three, plus c. And this is the m, which is the slope. Okay? So, you're just going to take note of these two things, and it will be easy for you to determine whether the uh, is curve is going to move or not. Okay? Just look at these two things. So, for example, if let's say my A changes, A bar changes. So when A bar changes, basically what happens is that my Y intersect has changed. So when my Y intersect has changed, okay, let's let me show you. So let's say I got this. Okay, this is a downward sloping IS curve. Okay, so let's say my A bar has dropped. Okay, so that means my y intersect is lower, that means I must be lower here. So I will come here, so that's why I move this way. Okay, so like that, it becomes very, very easy for you to understand where the curve moves. Okay, now, if let's say the IS, the, the A bar increases, so IS will shift left because there's a high intercept. And the A bar decreases, IS will shift left because the intersect is lower now. Okay, so we have got these two scenarios. So for example, if let's say uh, government spending has increased. Okay, that's an expansionary fiscal policy. So, expansionary fiscal policy is when the government uh, wants to promote growth by either increasing their own spending or by decreasing taxes. Okay, so what we have is uh, this is going to shift outwards because the intersect has increased. So, my new notation now will be IS1 bracket G1 comma T0. Okay, now actually, you just use common sense, it will help you lah. Because you see, when, when, when the government wants to expand the uh, economy, right? Obviously, the IS curve has to shift right so that you go more towards the right on the y axis, or the income axis, right? But uh, yeah, we need to prove everything. Okay, so now, if A bar drops, for example, if T increases, so you see, uh, you just gotta look at this equation. This is the A bar equation, right? So T increase, so this thing increase, so once this thing increase, this whole thing is gonna become smaller because it's a minus over here, right? So this is going to shift backwards, and this is my new notation, IS1 bracket G0 T1. Okay, it's very easy. Now what if my Y coefficient changes? So what is a Y coefficient? It's basically the bunch of crap that is in front of the letter Y. Okay, so this is the bunch of crap that is in front of Y. I have 1 minus C1 over I1. Okay, so now what if this figure gets bigger? Okay, uh, IS becomes steeper. Right, I mean, this is basic maths. Uh, you should be very good at this. Okay, so we have this situation over here when the IS curve becomes steeper. Okay, the the IS is gonna yeah become steeper, and this is when the IS becomes flatter. Okay, and you will notice that if let's say for example C1 uh, decreases. Okay, so for this thing to increase, for the slope to increase, C1 has to decrease. When C1 decreases, something happens here as well. Okay, when this decreases, okay, this whole thing will decrease, right? So it not only becomes steeper, it shifted down as well. Okay, and similar for a decrease in the slope, okay, when C1 has increased. Okay, so sometimes we cannot be so fixated as to say that, oh, um, because of this equation and this equation on top over here, okay, my eyes is gonna rotate this way and it's gonna shift some more. Okay, no. Sometimes, uh, when, okay, when we go into the ISI model, I'll show you why, okay, that uh, instead of doing this, sometimes it will just rotate along a certain point in the IS curve, and that certain point is where the LM intersects it, okay, the reason for this is for comparison reasons, okay, but I uh, will go through that in the IS uh, LM model, okay, you have just successfully uh, learned and understood the IS model.